Welcome back to a brand new No BS Crypto News video where I bring you crypto news every day in the most No BS kind of way. So today we have some news leading to Bitcoin and Bitcoin adoption. Actually, some pretty insane growth over the last 12 months. Also some possibly bad news coming for Ethereum based on some important metrics. And also we do have a very big warning for crypto investors from the SEC yesterday. You're going to want to pay attention to that as well. We also have some more as well to touch on. Overall today, guys, the market is quite red. Not going to lie to you. Now, it's red, but particularly Bitcoin isn't down that much. As we'll see in a second, it basically is holding the high that it recently had in the last, like, what, 20 months. So we are still up there, and I think a lot of people are taking possibly profits here from their old coins, hence why we have a massive sea of red. Moving it over to Bitcoin in anticipation, or at least in cash, for these ETFs. Buy the rumor, possibly sell the news, but of course, I think retail will prop up Bitcoin at least temporarily. Now, of course, if Bitcoin isn't approved for these ETFs, I think we will have a pretty big crash, at least temporarily speaking, but we'll have a pump temporarily, I believe, and I think people are getting ready for that. So as you can see here, again, basically the 20-month high was over here in January, right? And that, again, was the high we had reached. We weren't at this level until the bull market, right? Basically, when the bull market was teetering off into a bear market, I think April of 2022. So yeah, we are still up there. There's nothing to really be concerned with. I think once we kind of break a level of support down at like the 41,000s and we go under 40,000, that could be an indication something big is coming. So either way, altcoins today aren't looking amazing. As I said before, Stacks is up 10%. Axelar, Maker, Injective, and Bitcoin Cash in the top 100 are basically the only gainers we are seeing today. Everything else is down and they're down big, which is good. Don't trick yourself. Red is not bad, red is good, okay? Especially for all of you who haven't got your final positions in yet, this guy is speaking definitely over here, right? So Mina, as I said, I'm gonna to look to buy Mina under $1, but of course, I'm not just gonna FOMO in when it gets to 99 cents. We have to be patient, assess the market sentiment, and look to buy in if it looks like it can crash lower at a better price. I'm also eyeing off ICP. Now, I'm eyeing off ICP because this will be one of the biggest gainers in the bull run, I believe, without a shadow of a doubt. So I remember complaining to Mark, the community admin, about $5 for ICP because I wanted to get in at like $2.90 at its low. And uh, so, you know, respects to that, it's definitely up quite a bit. So 2X and a 2X does play out substantially over the course of time. But I think anything under about $8 to $9 would be something that I would really like to get into. Maybe wishful thinking, but either way, I'm also looking to get into Multiverse X. These guys are only a 2X up from their lows over like, like three or four months ago, basically. So if we can fall under 40 bucks, I most definitely will be buying a lot of Multiverse X. Now, let's get into the first topic today. It is the Bitcoin news. So Bitcoin has been, I guess, rapidly expanding over the last 12 months. We've seen it triple the amount of vendors accepting Bitcoin payments uh, in 2023. Now, keep in mind, 2023 was a bearish year. Nothing good to say about 2023 apart from the last three months, right? So number of in-person merchants who accept Bitcoin has tripled, going from about 2,200 to now 6,000, which again is quite insane. Now, most of this is concentrated in Europe, the US, but mainly Latin America, okay? And it makes sense, of course. A lot of those countries have hyperinflation, right? Those economies are really screwed, so they'll naturally lean to something like Bitcoin. But the issue is, and I like this report from the block here that outlines there is, of course, an inherent, I guess not a negative, but side effect from using Bitcoin, okay? Like they say, paying for physical goods with Bitcoin could be a risky proposition because the Bitcoin to buy a $20 pizza recently, 2023, would now be worth 50 bucks, right? And of course, the pizza, you know, bought way back or used to pay with Bitcoin way back in like whatever, 2010 or 2011 for 10,000 Bitcoins, well, that's $44 million, okay? So again, we have kind of morphed Bitcoin to be this, what it was designed to be, right? The peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. And now it's just simply a store of value, okay? It is a store of value with anticipation of, of course, high gains. So it's moved away from that proposition. So, you know, we can't really go ahead and say it should be good for payments. The Lightning Network would have been good for that, but I still think in these Latin American countries and wherever a third world country, even, you know, first world countries that don't have a solid asset in its reserves, which is basically every country around the world, no one uses gold anymore. I think Bitcoin could actually be quite good over the course of time once it like steadies out a little bit, right? So Ethereum validator queue over here is the second bit of news today. Now, we've seen a massive uptick 
and the validators leaving Ethereum, okay? Now, this is just people who stake their ETH, so it's not necessarily validators, it's also delegators as well. As we can see here, it has had a massive uptick. So from the 4th of January, we had exits of 16,000. That is insane. Again, consider the fact that if we click all over here, we were like up at entries, right? We were in the green at 93,000 over here in the bull market and it's come down since October, actually since the bull runs restarted again and it's been kind of plateauing, but again, massive uptick in exits. This is all thanks to uh, Celsius and Figment withdrawing their stakes. Of course, Celsius being one of those crypto lenders as well that fell somewhat recently. They had a fair chunk also staked with Figment, which is like an, an institutional staking platform and uh, Celsius, of course, liquidating their positions are looking to sell their ETH. So a lot of that has come from Celsius and of course, inherently Figment as well. Apparently there are some withdrawals from Figment nat natively, but either or, a lot of this has come from these guys, okay? So the processing time for the completing exit queue will be over five days with a total withdrawal length of more than 14 days. Just the way that Ethereum's processing of ins and outs uh, takes a little bit of time, of course, to maintain network integrity or as if a liveliness, right? This comes as Celsius going through reconstruction after filing for bankruptcy protection last year, shed its plans to cancel its stake in Ethereum's network, intending to distribute assets to its creditors, which is a good thing, of course. Now, you might be thinking, oh my God, this is a lot, Karin. Like, what is it? 29 million ETH is staked the network. They're looking to get out 500,000, or that's at least a total that's been, you know, removed from the staking pool. But it's only 1.7% of ETH in total, right? So, Again, this is going to come out over the next 5 to 14 days, and already it's only dropped about, you know, less than 1%. So it's going to be minor, 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 minor. I think they give the exact percentage over here, 1.7% overall. So it's not that much, but it is notable, okay? Because again, you know, if they actually decide to sell their Ethereum on the open market, this might cause a capitulation event. Of course, people, ah, Ethereum's down, you know, 5, 10% because of this, you know, uh, withdrawal from Celsius here, you know, repaying their creditors. And that causes what's called a capitulation where more people panic. All it takes is one or two articles to come out and all of a sudden the price of Ethereum is down 15% because just simply Celsius is looking to pay back from their mistake, basically. So here it is. The SEC is issuing a FOMO warning amid hype for the spot Bitcoin ETFs. Now they've done this before, but let me just show you the actual tweet that they had released recently. So they said, say no go to FOMO. You gotta love it, right? Just because others might buy a particular investment doesn't mean it's the right opportunity for you. Learn more about finding out what's right for you, da 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 da. So basically the SEC had this recently, like posted yesterday, and they said, look, inherently, I think they did say this, hey, look, these ETFs are apparently coming out, all this Bitcoin hype and news, guilty over here, right? And uh, don't fall for it, of course, don't fall for the influencers telling you to buy this or do this or whatever it is. And I agree with them. I agree with them. They're actually doing their job for once, right? But interestingly, interestingly, I've done this twice before, as I said. So amid a roaring crypto and equities bull market that saw Bitcoin, Ether, and others reach a new all-time highs in November, they posted in January of 2021, so like basically, you know, 11 months before the bull market, the same thing, like the exact same thing, basically. They also issued it, issued it again in March of 2022 when the markets were cooling down. So they seem to be posting this particularly at moments of high volatility, which I believe is an indication that, and a lot of people have speculated as well, of course, that this is in preparation for these ETFs being approved in the next few days. And at worst, the next couple months in March is that like last deadline. So I think it's coming. Proof is in the pudding. Okay, so I don't want to spend too much time on that. Let's move on to the next topic of today, which is scams, hacks. Are we thinking to yourself, Kyron, get into the good stuff. Why do we have to know about hacks? I'm not going to fall for hacks. Listen, I think we all hope and think that we aren't going to fall for hacks, scams, whatever. Unfortunately, it does happen. And in crypto, there's no real way of telling. A lot of these applications, Uniswap, Trader Joe, uh, you know, One Inch, you use these DEXs or you use these tools often where you sign your wallets, but you can get complacent or the interface can get hacked, at least the front end. And you think you're signing over, of course, in the normal way. But in fact, you're signing off to a you know malicious website or of course, a phishing attack or something like that. So be very careful, always, always double and triple check your uh, URLs before you use a website and always check the Twitter as well. And even the Telegram or Discord chat to see if they have been hacked. Because while you think, oh my God, that's an extra five minutes out of my day, I don't really want to bother. That could literally save you hundreds of dollars or thousands, depending on how much you have in your non-custodial wallet. So it's very important now, as we see over here, this wasn't a hack per se, but Mango Farm Soul, which was a meme coin apparently on Solana, 
was a rug pull instead. So to participate, they had an airdrop, you just had to deposit Solana tokens into the protocol. That is the inherent danger with airdrops that are confirmed and like, hey, just deposit and use or stake bond uh, to the network that we are on and you can definitely get the airdrop, right? Now, Manta Network was one I participated in recently. That is a more established brand, of course, much more reputable. But this being obviously a meme coin, you don't know who the uh, sort of owners and founders are very careful i never invest in a single protocol unless i am happy to lose my money that aren't a doxed team plain and simple if you don't know who the investor the, the owners are how is there any repercussions that can come from a scam so just think about it like that right now we also had another bit of news as well coin paid gets hacked apparently again for more than seven million dollars actually 7.5 million dollars this is an estonian crypto payment service provider i haven't heard of them before but they've also been hacked in the past for 37.3 million dollars in july of last year so no more than seven months ago they were hacked as well so in total almost 50 million dollars that is not chump change to say the least so unfortunately if you are involved with this again just get yourself sorted make sure you haven't had any funds lost but a lot of money guys and i think this is going to start ramping up soon it's important i do touch on this for you newbies because accept the risks guys accept the risks be diligent i still double check my websites and i still i don't like signing over the rights to anything on my wallet because i just know there's instant risk it can just instantly be hacked and drained uh, and you can't even, you know, sort of counteract it. It's instant. Now, today's last news, we have Scale, which is basically like its own network, but does have this sort of interconnection with Ethereum, like a two-way bridge, where it kind of leverages the EVM a bit more intimately than other networks per se. These guys have had a massive increase in demand recently. This is their user count. It has, as you can see, pretty much growing at this point, linearly, almost exponentially, right? Currently, in total, 3.5 million user accounts now keep in mind this is a very small project right these guys are only a 400 million market cap now again they're not a layer two like this over here says these guys aren't a layer two solution they aren't sort of uh, i guess indebted to ethereum for security they're their own like layer one layer zero network basically but i think one of my community members put me onto these guys on a live stream right and i remember looking into it thinking to myself like instantly my feeling was this looks great a lot of big buzzwords are used right they're modular fantastic they have their own on-chain storage which is a big tick believe it or not and instant finality these are amazing things right infinite scalability but i was concerned maybe the fact that they didn't actually uphold these values they just mostly had it for show but it looks like based on the growth and based on, I guess, how it's performing so far, it, it looks to be true, right? So I haven't done my deep dive on this yet, but let me know down below if you would like to look into scale a bit more. And I can do a video on these guys. Again, they have been growing, right? A lot of this demand has come from a project called Nebula, which is a gaming-based blockchain built on scale, okay? So this might be a good indication that Nebula might be the way to go as well. These guys don't have a token, at least yet, and if they do, I would suspect there could be an airdrop. So keep on the lookout. And of course, I'll keep you guys in the loop. You know how I do over here, right? So with that being said, thank you all for watching today's video. Let me know what you think about the news down below. And with that being said, thank you all. Talk to you tomorrow. Take care.